Hello! Today we're going to talk about thin film interference. So this is interference between light that reflects from the two surfaces of a thin film. And a good example is a soap bubble. So a soap bubble has a very thin film, uh, mostly water, kind of soapy water. And you can get some colorful patterns as you see in this picture. And the patterns you get are explained by what's called thin film interference. Interference between light reflecting off the two surfaces of the film. And our second goal is to go over a five-step method we use for analyzing thin film interference situations. Okay, so we'll start with a little bit of review. And we might remember that um, when we have a wave reflecting from a fixed end, such as on a guitar string, it reflects upside down. And when a wave reflects from a free end, such as the end of an open pipe, it reflects upright. And this actually has some bearing on thin film interference. And so we'll go take our analogy a little bit, bit further with our waves on strings. So now we're going to tie a light string, the red one, to a heavy string in blue. And then we'll send a pulse along there. And when the pulse gets to the knot, the knot acts like it's either a fixed end or a free end. What do you think? Okay, so in this case, when you go from light to heavy, then the knot acts like a fixed end. It's pretty hard for that light string to get that heavy string to move, so it's closer to a, a fixed end than a free end. It's not completely fixed, of course, so part of the wave is transmitted into the, uh, the heavier medium, the heavy string. And what's really important is that part of the wave that comes back is inverted. It's upside down because it reflects as if it reflected off a fixed end. Okay, if we do the opposite, now we have the pulse traveling along the heavy string and we have a knot tying the heavy string to the light string. Well, in this case, the knot acts more like a free end. Okay, And so we do get some part of the wave being transmitted into the light medium. And importantly, we have the part of the wave that reflects back is reflected back upright because the knot where it reflected from acts more like a fixed free end than a, than a fixed end. Uh, this might look a little bit strange to you because the amplitude of the wave in the second medium is a lot higher than the amplitude of the pulse head in the original the original pulse head in the, in the first medium. But this actually is the solution that conserves energy here. So this is energy conservation. Um, you get as much energy in the two pulses, the red pulse going right and the blue pulse going left, as you have in the blue one going right originally. Okay, so now we'll start talking about light. How does this relate to light? So we'll talk about light, but of course it applies to other electromagnetic waves. And you can also apply these things to sound waves too. So you can get a 180 degree phase shift when you reflect from a higher end medium. Okay, And I'm going to claim that a 180 degree phase shift, that's like flipping the wave upside down. In other words, you flip the wave upside down when you reflect from a higher end medium, that is, is equivalent to a shift of half a wavelength. Okay, So you take a sine wave and you flip it upside down you get exactly the same thing as if you just taken the original wave and moved it over left to right by half a wavelength. So we're going to look at our, our flips upside down as being equivalent to actually picking up the wave and moving it half a wavelength. In contrast, if you reflect from a medium of lower index of refraction, there is no, no shift at all. Okay, no flip. And that's like the uh, the wave coming in on the heavy string and reflecting off the knot tied to the light string. Okay, so once again we're talking about thin film interference and an important part about this is that if you really want to see the nice colors you see in a soap bubble then the thickness of the film has to be fairly comparable to the wavelength of light. So that's several hundred nanometers. Okay, so let me go over the basic sequence of events when we analyze a thin film scenario. And there'll be four events here. 
This is not the five-step method, by the way. That's a whole other thing we'll talk about at the end. Okay, so first a wave comes in. You can see the wave coming down uh, into the, uh, well, we got a sandwich here, basically. We've got medium one, characterized by Nixon refraction N1. Medium two is the film itself. That's the pink medium in the middle, characterized by Nixon refraction N2, and it's got a thickness T. And then that sits on top of medium three, and that's in green, and that's characterized by Nixon refraction N3. Okay, so medium one and medium three are very, very thick media, but we have a very thin layer uh, in between those, the pink one. Okay, so we bring a wave and we shine it down onto the top surface of the film. We could be shining a laser pointer down on uh, oil film on water or something like that. That's what it could be. Okay, so we're going to run the film forward uh, a full period here. So now we've got an entire wavelength has gone into the thin film. And it turns out that we have a very special thickness here. The thickness of the, of the film happens to match the wave's wavelength in the film. And that, that'll be, turn out to be quite important. Okay, so in addition to that wave, some of the wave being transmitted into that medium, some of the wave gets reflected back. And of course it gets reflected back along the same line where it came in. But I have shifted that reflected part a little bit to the right, just so it doesn't get too complicated with all these waves overlapping on the way back. Okay, so we've moved the wave to the right. So there's the transmitted piece, and here's the corresponding reflected part. Okay, so not all the wave has been transmitted, some of it was reflected, and you can see in this case that the reflected part has been inverted it's inverted compared to the transmitted peak there, okay? And that's consistent with N2 being larger than N1. And you can also see that because you can see the wavelength in the, in the film, the pink medium is lower than it is in the uh, medium one. Okay, now of course let's focus on the transmitted part. Well, some of that keeps going and hits the interface between media, medium uh, two and medium three. Part of it goes into medium three, that's the transmitted part, and part of it reflects back. Again, the part that reflects back comes back along the same line it was coming in at because the uh, wave is incident along the normal. So go back along the same normal, but to prevent confusion here with everything jumbled together, I've shifted that reflected part way over to the far right. Okay, so you, again, you can see the transmitted part and the reflected part. Now you can see that the reflected part is upright compared to the transmitted part. Okay, so that there's no shift there, and that's because N2 is bigger than N3 in this particular case. Okay, so we'll play the film forward uh, another period. We've gone first, we went by a period, and then we went to here by another period. Now we're going another period further along. Okay, so now the wave emerges, the reflected wave emerges from the film out into the uh, top medium. We have two waves uh, that have come back. One reflected off the top surface of the film, one reflecting off the bottom surface of the film. Okay, And if you look at these two waves, those two reflected pieces, you can see they're going to be destructively interfering with each other. And it'll be completely destructive interference in this case. And that's only because our thickness happens to be a good match to the wavelength of the um, of the wave in the in the in the film itself, okay? So our thickness happens to be exactly one wavelength thick. Uh, other thicknesses would work; would also give destructive interference, and we'll go over how to figure those out. And certain thicknesses would also produce completely constructive interference. You might want to think about how you do that. Okay, well those are the basic steps in a typical scenario. And of course, if you change the order of the ends, then you'd get different things happening. Okay, in this case, N2 is the largest index of refraction, bigger than N3 and bigger than N1. If you change that, you get something different happening at the various reflections. Okay, so when we do our problems, when we're doing thin film problems, we use a five-step method. 
And what we're really going to do is determine the effective path length difference between the wave that reflects off the top surface of the film and the wave that reflects off the bottom surface. Okay, now you can certainly tell that the wave that reflects off the bottom surface of the film goes an extra distance of 2t. It goes down through the film a distance t and back up through the film a distance t. The wave reflecting off the top surface didn't do that. So there's a path length difference right away of 2t. And then we've got to account for any inversions that happen on the two reflections. Okay, so is there an inversion when the wave reflects off the top surface? Well, that's like an extra half a wavelength path length. Is there an inversion that happens at the bottom surface? Again, that's another half a wavelength if there is. Okay, so we're accounting for the 2t real path length difference coming from the down and back through the film. And then we also got to add in any extra effective half wavelength shifts coming from uh, the wave being flipped upside down if it reflects off a higher end medium. Okay, so there's, let's go through the five step method. Just go over the basics, see how it works. Okay, oh, the other thing to keep in mind is. Well, first of all, when the wave gets inverted, that's equivalent to a half wavelength shift, and that only happens when it reflects off a medium which is has a higher index of refraction than the one it's coming from. Okay, and we're going to find the wavelength in our equations here, and what wavelength is it that matters really? Because we have three different media: medium one, medium two, medium three. So therefore, we have three different wavelengths. Anytime you change n, the index of refraction, you change the wavelength. And so the one that really matters here is the wavelength in the film itself. Okay, so when we put down lambda, it's going to be lambda in the film. And that's true anytime we write down lambda here, okay? We might rewrite that in terms of lambda in vacuum later, but in the equations, we're going to start with lambda film. Okay, so step one, we're just going to focus on the wave that reflects off the top surface of the film. So we look at N1 and N2. Okay, and all we've got to worry about is does the wave get flipped upside down when it reflects or does it not? If N2 is greater than N1, then it gets flipped upside down, and we say there's an effective uh, path length difference there, effective extra length traveled of half a wavelength because of that flip upside down. If N2 turns out to be less than N1, then there's no shift at all. So the two options here are delta T is half a wavelength over uh, half a wavelength, and it's half the film wavelength. This is true even though that thing doesn't even go into the film. It's still the film wavelength uh, divided by two, or it's zero if N2 is less than N1. Okay, so those are two options for step two. Step one, half a wavelength in the film or nothing. Okay, then we'll determine what do I call delta B, the shift with the wave that reflects off the bottom surface of the film. Okay, so automatically we get a 2T coming from the fact that this wave goes down through the film a distance T, reflects off the N2, N3 interface and comes back through the film another distance t. So right away we got an extra path length traveled by that wave of 2t. Then we got to worry about is there an inversion when it reflects off medium 3. So it's in medium 2 reflecting off medium 3. So that depends on how N3 compares to N2. If N3 is bigger than N2, then you get a flip. The wave flips upside down, that's an extra half a wavelength. So we say delta B is 2t plus half the film wavelength. The other thing we can do is we can have N3 less than N2. Then, in, If that's the case, you do not get a flip when it uh, reflects. And so you just get delta B, the shift of the wave reflecting from the bottom surface, is simply 2T in that case. So those are two options. 2T plus half the film wavelength or 2T. Okay, so now we want to find the effective path length difference, which I'm going to call delta. Call it delta L if you want, whatever you want. And the effective path length difference is simply delta B, what we got for the wave reflecting off the bottom surface, minus delta T. That's the shift we got for the wave reflecting off the top surface. Okay. 
Okay, so step four is now we're going to bring in the appropriate interference condition. Okay, if we want the two waves to cancel, as we might for a non reflecting coating on uh, glasses or on a uh, camera lens, then we'll bring in the condition for destructive interference. Okay, we'll set our our delta, our effective path length difference, equal to m plus a half wavelengths. And again, it's the film wavelength. Or maybe we want constructive interference. Okay, maybe we shine a white flashlight down on oil film, and when we look down, that film looks orange to us. And so we can basically say that uh, the film looks orange because it's constructively interfering for orange wavelengths. So we say, in that case, our effective path length difference delta is m lambda, and lambda again is the film wavelength, the wavelength in the film. Okay, so step five, then you got equations, you have an equation, and you solve for whatever you're trying to solve for. You might solve for uh, film thickness, something like that. And so this equation in general connects the thickness of the film to the wavelength of the light in the film, now, sometimes we don't know up front the wavelength of the light in the film. We know maybe the wavelength of the light in air or in vacuum. They're basically the same. And so it's often useful, useful to remember that the wavelength in the film is the wavelength of the light in vacuum divided by the index of refraction of the film. Okay, so that's the basics of the five-step method. And when we get to class, we will try a couple of those and see how this process works. Okay, so that's all for our introduction to thin film interference.